Okay, tonight's sheet pan meal involves salmon. So I got the salmon from Costco. It's a lot of it. How many pounds is this? 1.8 pounds. I might, you know what? This can be two dinners, my phone. So I had big plans for this dish, but I might split this in half and then share my amazing salmon recipe with you later in the week or tomorrow. Oh my gosh, mama four interruption about every four minutes, that's accurate. Okay, I think I was talking about my amazing salmon recipe. I will share that with you soon. It is incredible. I just, I'm missing like one, at least one ingredient. I don't know, I haven't looked at the recipe. Okay, so tonight, this is what I came up with. I thought, what's well, good with salmon, dill, lemon, everyone knows that combo. Everyone knows it's delicious. I found uh, this recipe calls for maple syrup or you can use honey. I've seen it used interchangeably. And then some Dijon mustard. And I remember last time we use this combo, oh, specifically with this seasoning. Uh, this wasn't in the recipe that I saw, but this is just from my brain. And I thought, wow, that's gonna taste delicious. Cause last time we used that combo, it was delicious, but it was with chicken. I assume it's gonna be the same. You can use meat interchangeably as well. And I'm just gonna uh, throw some sweet potatoes on my sheet pan and some broccoli, and it's gonna be delicioso. I'm just gonna cut up the sweet potato into pretty small pieces because salmon doesn't take that long to cook. I mean, I'm sure, I have. I didn't actually read the recipe. It might say to cook the potatoes and then to throw the salmon on, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Let me just cut them up, okay? I'm just gonna throw the potatoes on the sheet pan and get them started. I have some oil and then some salt and pepper and that's all it takes. Even though that's all it takes, I'm gonna do a little extra and add on this buttery seasoning. It's so good, I don't use it enough. Okay, I'm gonna give it a juice and then, I don't know, leave it in the oven for at least 15 minutes and then I'll add the rest of the stuff on. All right, I am gonna cut my broccoli next and I saw someone uh, more famous than me do this. This way? Is this how they did it? Maybe they were cutting something else. I don't know. You know what? Don't, don't listen to me, guys. No, that would make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. I'm doing it anyway. Well, I got it off the stock pretty quickly. Maybe it is what they did. You know what? Subscribe for more, for more cooking tips. That was so much faster than like taking off the floret piece by piece. But here I am doing it anyway because we need smaller pieces to throw in the oven. I'm a mess. For the salmon topping, you need a quarter cup of syrup. And I'm gonna do a bit more, because that's always what I do, because more is more. Whoa! Two tablespoons of Dijon. Enough of that. Then I'm gonna add this in, just for fun. Uh, mostly because it's delicious. Maybe a little more, <laughs> it's a lot. Give this a good mix, and then we're going to throw it on the salmon, and then maybe it'll like, you know, drain off and hit up the veggies and stuff while it's cooking. It smells weird. I cut into this salmon and this, I feel like is a 20 minute meal. Oh, except for the potatoes. You know, cook it with rice or whatever. Ooh, smells like fish. All right, I'm just gonna use half of it tonight. Where's half? Well, this, I don't think three pieces is enough for my family, but Good thing, my kids don't really love salmon. Some of them do, some of them don't. I also have some leftover chicken in the fridge, so we're gonna be all set tonight. If I really wanted to, I can make the whole thing, but I don't really want to. There's that, washing my hands. Okay, the sweet potatoes are, are you know, they're cooking. They're on their way. I'm just gonna shove these over to the side. Ah! Yeah, it's hot. I don't know how I'm going to dump everything else on here. Oh, the person in the video who did this must have hot hands. Rubber hands, fake hands. Where's my baby hand? Okay, you know what else I found in my fridge that I thought, yeah, I could eat that because that just doesn't look like enough veggies to me. I found some green beans, so we're gonna do that up. Same thing with these veggies, a little bit of oil. Oil is my blood. Salt and the pepper. And then this magic butter seasoning that just makes everything smell better. Am I getting any on the veggies? <laughs> I'm gonna give that a good toss as much as I can with my wooden hand. My whisk hand. Oh, it's not that hot. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Look, I'm a real chef. Yeah, I could totally do this. Touch the pan and stuff. Give me some more oil. Yeah, it's not bad, guys. Don't be afraid of the hot pan. It's no big deal. It's like the test of a real chef, you know? All right, let's scoot that over. Ah. Now let's make room for the salmon, the star of tonight. 
Doesn't that just look good? You know what I mean? I just touched the pan, it was hot. <laughs> 411 degrees hot. I'm just gonna sprinkle this with some seasoning. I don't know if the recipe says to do this. I feel like you should season along the way. Feel free to add some S and P on there. Should I be fancy and get a, what's that thing called? A, a thing, a brush? One more thing to wash over here. I did it for you. I'm just gonna brush on this, Oh, shall we call it a glaze and be super fancy about it? Dijon maple glaze. Last one over here. Ooh, something about salmon makes me think that I'm eating healthy. All right, that looks nice and coated and we still have a little bit left, so I just feel like I can dump that on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and back into the oven. I do 411 degrees because my oven's broken and it's whatever. You can do 425 until it's done. My guess is about 15, 20 more minutes. All right, look at how delicious that looks. Mmm, hold on. I don't think you can truly see the deliciousness. Can you? Can you? Can you? Uh, I guess you can just take my word for it. It looks delicious. I'll let you know how it tastes. Sheet pinwheels are so simple. Okay, we're gonna see if the fish is actually, ooh, nice and flaky. Taste test for the chef. Mm, mm-hmm. Oh my heavens! The Dijon, the maple, the glaze. Oh my gosh, I could eat six of those salmon pieces just for myself. Can't wait to dive in. Ooh, it's gonna be a dinner. Another taste test for the chef, I can't wait to be seated, you know what I mean? Get that glaze up on that. How about a sweet potato this time around? A bon appetit. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So good. How about a broccoli? Dip that in. Oh yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By the way, I cooked it for 15 minutes. Perfection. Okay, I'm throwing dinner together tonight. I didn't know what I was gonna make. <laughs> I mean, that's really every night for me. So this is what I'm throwing together. Oh, the name is lemon pepper chicken. I actually don't know. Lemon pepper chicken, let's call it that. But of course, I'm taking my own spin on things. So you're gonna need just some fresh, fresh veggies, whatever you wanna use. I have some sweet potatoes, carrots, an onion. I've got some broccoli there. I found this bread at Publix. Ooh, Cheesecake Factory. Hold on, I'm nursing Meredith, so I have like one hand. Our famous brown bread. Ooh, all right. We're gonna slap some butter on those. And then some olive oil. And then this is just leftover chicken that I need to use up, which really was the inspiration behind dinner tonight. Did I say you need lemons? Because it's lemon pepper chicken. And then some, what is this, garlic. You think it's time to eat the garlic? Oh, really the inspiration behind this was, wow, I need to use up this stuff. These potatoes are on their last leg. The carrots are kind of, the lemons, I've had them for like seven months. So it's time to get this going. Okay, so for lemon pepper chicken, you need obviously some lemon pepper. Well, I have this like grinder. I don't know if I'm gonna do all that because you need like three tablespoons. So I thought, hey, maybe this will taste just as good. So to kick things off, we're gonna slap the marinade together. Let's do it. First thing for this marinade, we're gonna get our juices flowing. We've got some lemons here. <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous that I'm nervous. I mean, this is real life, okay? We gotta get dinner going. I'm hungry, everyone's hungry. Okay, we're just gonna get half a cup of lemon juice. Oh, Meredith's gonna do it! <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you right now, I have like several cuts on my hands, just little nicks, and this lemon juice hurting something fierce. Okay, is that half a cup? I feel like that's good enough. To our marinade, we're going to add lemon zest. How much lemon zest? One tea, no, hold on. That's what I get for not reading the recipe before I start. Oh great, my battery's dying. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Okay, back to the lemon zest. How much lemon zest? Two tablespoons, Lord. I'm just gonna zest one lemon and call it a day. This is definitely not a zester. I'm using a cheese grater because you work with what you have. This is my life. I just, I can't deal with any more kitchen utensils. Watch next time I'm shopping, I will buy like four lemon zesters. Only get the yellow part. The white part of the lemon is bitter and you don't want that. It'll mess up your entire day. Then we're gonna grab three cloves of this really fresh garlic straight from my garden. What, you thought I bought this from Publix eight months ago? Incorrect. It was nine months ago. But it's still good. If you leave garlic for long enough, it'll start growing. I have this really nifty uh, garlic masher here, so I just throw a couple in. Shmush them. And then throw that in. <laughs> That's 
<laughs> okay, this thing, I gotta tell you, it's really fun to clean. Okay, so we've got that going on. What else do we need? I feel like this is taking me 20 minutes. How much olive oil? A quarter cup. All right, that, well, I wasn't watching, but is that a quarter cup? Or should we do more? That's good. Well, how about a little more? It separates, so I feel like I've got a pretty good gauge on how much is in there. Here's where the recipe gets its name. One teaspoon. One teaspoon, and the whole recipe is named after this. How is that fair? Well, I guess all that lemon juice. All right, well, I'm gonna put that in, but I feel like that's not enough. I'm gonna season it with this as well, this Italian seasoning. That'll be good, you just give that a mix. Great, you know what, you don't even have to give it a mix. My chicken was in this Ziploc bag because I saved it from when I made dinners. I'm just gonna dump it all in there. Really, I could have just mixed it all in there. Oh, marinades are my absolute favorite, guys. Ideally, you wanna make this the day before, let it marinate 24 hours overnight. Morning of, you do it. Um, so I'm making dinner now. So <laughs> I'm gonna let this marinate while my veggies kind of pre-cook in the oven. I'll let you know, but I'm just gonna let this sit as long as possible before my kids order takeout. <laughs> While it's marinating, I am going to prep my veggies. You can use any potatoes you like or have. I have these sweet potatoes and they need to be eaten, so that's what I'm using. And I haven't fully decided, but I think I'm gonna cut them like in just little pieces, probably around the same size as the carrots, so they all take the same amount of time to cook. So like this size, see that? Perfect. Someone have Food Network on speed dial because these knife cuts, I'm telling you, cordon bleu, this will make Julia Child proud. Throw the sweet potatoes onto the sheet pan. And gosh, there are so many reasons why I love sheet pan meals. I washed my carrots. I used to peel my carrots, but now I just find that it's a waste of time. And I'm just gonna go in on an angle and just chop it, chop it, chop it like so. I like that, it's a little fancy. Anyway, so sheet pan meals are one of my favorites because you can just throw any meat on it, any type of sauce. I'm using lemon today. I feel like that adds a lot of flavor without adding a lot of calories. But then we've got the olive oil that's just gonna keep the chicken nice and juicy, right? The possibilities with sheet pan meals are endless. You throw everything together. There's minimal cleanup. The majority of them, I would say, are pretty healthy because they do include a lot of vegetables or maybe those are just the ones that I like to look at because this is what I like to eat. Nice and simple. Every night of my life, I could eat roasted veggies. It just brings out all the flavors. I'm just gonna throw my carrots on the sheet pan as well. Are we gonna have room for the broccoli? We're gonna make room, right? I have something green on your plate. I'm just gonna throw the broccoli right on there. And since our root vegetables are cut pretty thin, uh, I think they'll cook at around the same time as the broccoli, so we're good on that. But I am gonna throw some olive oil on all of the veggies and then salt and pepper. Hey, maybe lemon pepper, tie all the flavors together. Maybe we'll throw some lemon zest on them too. Why not, right? One of my favorite things is broccoli with lemon juice. Oh my gosh, talk about delicious and simple. I don't know lemon and sweet potato, I don't know. So let me, let me just concentrate on this section. Let me throw some juice on here just for fun. Oh wait, I still have my onion. At this point, should I even bother? I'm just gonna give it a nice toss to the veggies. Make sure it's all coated. Oh wait, I forgot salt. <laughs> Here's a salt and pepper. One of my favorite things is just carrots and onions roasted in the oven. Oh, I could have that breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I need a bigger sheet pan. Okay, well I thought I was gonna pre-cook the veggies, but turns out I'm not going to. So I'm just gonna lay the uh, non-marinated chicken straight on here. It'll be fine. Okay, so I cut the bigger pieces of chicken uh, into smaller pieces of chicken, just so they would cook at a decent time. And then I have all of this juice. So you know what I'm gonna do with that? Add it to the veggies. Okay, into the oven. I have it at 424, if you could believe it. Uh, I don't know how long, 25-ish minutes. This looks good. I'm washing my hands. And there it is, not cooked. But that is some good looking raw chicken. Here it is, all cooked. Oh, you can't really see the color on the chicken, but it is divine, how about that? The broccoli, 
Uh, I like it a little crispy like that, but everything looks good. I'll let you know how it tastes. I think, I mean, it smells amazing. I'll say that. You're going to take a, oh, taste test. It's going to burn your mouth. It just came out of the oven. I'll take a photo for the gram. Tonight, I'm about to throw together the easiest sheet pan dinner, and it is super delicious. Total crowd pleaser every time I make it. Not only is it amazingly simple, it's simple. <laughs> I don't know how else to sell it, so I'm just gonna get started. By the way, don't you just love when Target does this? $6.62 for this entire pack of chicken, plus a $3 off coupon. What? You know, life doesn't get much better than that. It's the little things, it's the simple pleasures. You know you're an adult when things like that make you happy, right? <laughs> okay, so I may need to break the rules a little bit on this one and use two sheet pans. Actually, there are no rules, so actually, I'm making up the rules. Well, maybe there are sheet pan, right? So I'm not breaking the rules, I'm just using more than one. I feel like a normal size family could get away with just using one sheet pan for this meal, but my family's pretty large and I'm making all of these chicken drumsticks. So I am going to use two pans. I've also made this chicken in a casserole dish before when they're like literally hugged up against one another and it comes out just fine that way, in case you're wondering. I'm washing my hands. So here's the easy part. All you have to do to make these incredibly delicious and crunchy and oh my gosh, mouth-watering. Just a little bit of oil. I just drizzle it right over the top. You season it with salt and pepper. You could certainly include literally any other seasonings that you like, but my kids are easy to please with some bland food. You could also get some citrus and drizzle some citrus over the chicken and that would be delicious as well. I have some limes and lemons, but again, I'm keeping it nice and easy because if this is like a middle of the weeknight meal, which it is for me, it's like crunch time to get these in the oven, right? And then I just rub the oil all over the skin. Yes, give it a little massage. And of course I have my oven set to 411 degrees and then you just cook these until they're done, about 30 minutes. Next up, I am going to cut up some potatoes. They're rolling all over. I'm using my old crusty pan over here, but it still works, so I'm keeping it. I just cut them in half. I throw them on the tray for now while I cut them, but I'll show you what I do with them later to ensure that once they're cooked, they are like french fries, the easiest ones. You don't have to soak the potato. They come out nice and crispy every time and my kids love them. I love them, everyone loves them, okay? It's my favorite way to cook, well really all vegetables, but especially potatoes. Well, I mean, unless I'm having baked potatoes or mashed potatoes or potatoes au gratin, Hasselback potatoes, scalloped potatoes. Since we're cooking all our vegetables at basically the same time, you want something that's going to take a while to bake because potatoes take a while to bake. So I thought, huh, Brussels sprouts is a perfect option. Not only are they delicious baby cabbages, they are cruciferous and uh, they take a while to cook. Not too long though, but pretty long if you want them nice and crispy. Now that everything's cut up, we give them the same treatment as the chicken, just a little bit of oil. I use avocado oil. It's a newfound love. I guess it's healthier for you. Has a higher heat smoking point. Is that what they call it? Oh my gosh, it's Bobby approved. Look at this. Expeller pressed right there. And bonus, it does not taste anything like avocados. So just a little bit of salt and pepper for these as well. I'm running low on pepper. And then you give them a juice. And here's the kicker with the potatoes. You flip them over so it's the cut side is down and that is going to give it a nice crisp in the oven. Well, I cut a lot of potatoes into the oven with the chicken. Okay, here it is all finished. I left the potatoes in a little longer than the chicken. But if you can see the skin on the chicken, it's nice and crispy just how, I mean, it's delicious that way. And the bottoms of these potatoes, oh, it's hot, are nice and golden brown and crispy as well, crispy, I should say. And then the Brussels sprouts are a little burned, but that's how we like them. There's also a lot of drippings here. You can make any kind of gravy if you're making anything else with it, but we just eat it. I forgot to mention, these are the leftover potatoes, but what these are fantastic for, what you could do, or what I like to do, is load them up and then put cheese on top and some bacon. Oh my gosh, bon appetit. This is lunch the next day. 
Mmm, delicious. All right, guys, are you ready for the easiest sheet pan meal in the history of sheet pan meals? What's in that bag? Oh, red onion. I don't know the name of this. Does it really matter at this point? Let's just call it Hawaiian chicken. I don't know why. We could just call it pineapple chicken. Why are pineapples associated with Hawaii? I'll never know. I could Google it, but it doesn't matter. Let's call it pineapple barbecue pepper and onion chicken. Sounds fantastic because that is all that you need to make this meal. Also, top it with some cilantro if you have it. If you don't, I'm sure it will still be delicioso. I'm also gonna throw some rice in the Instant Pot because, well, why not, right? You gotta get those carbs. So there's not much to this dinner. You basically just chop everything up and throw it on the sheet pan. Uh, well, you toss it with some barbecue sauce, but it's super simple. So I'm just taking this pineapple device that makes cutting up a pineapple so foolproof. But if you don't have one, uh, the easiest way that I used to do it before I had it was I just cut the sides off, all, all the way around, cut the sides off and the bottom, and, the and then I cut mine in half all the way down, and then cut that half in half, and then tilt it on its side, and go in at a diagonal and core it. Hard for me to explain without actually doing it. Matt, you can use your imagination. <laughs> it's actually quite simple, but so is this. I know pineapple is quite polarizing for some people when you add it to normal dishes. I know adding it to pizza is like the biggest controversy since, well, I don't know what the biggest controversy is, but I happen to love pineapple on my pizza. I love it alone. I just like pineapple in general because it is sweet, delicious, nature's candy. How could you go wrong? Oh, it's dripping everywhere. Look at the inside of this. Ooh, the pineapple juice. Oh, I should save it for something amazing. I don't know what, but look at this magic. Slices it all the way down. Oh yeah. How can it get any easier? It can't. I'm gonna give some pineapple to Wentworth and we'll put the rest on the sheet pan. There you go, kiddo. Okay, you could get a bowl because you're supposed to toss all of this with some barbecue sauce, but I'm just gonna use my hands so I don't have to wash a bowl. So I'm throwing all the pineapple on a sheet pan and then I'm gonna cut up my two peppers. The recipe calls for one orange, one red, but I'm sure whatever you have will suffice. I'm sure a yellow pepper would be, ooh, I have my dull knife, hold on. A yellow pepper would be delicious in this, but for the distinction of colors, I think the red pepper and orange pepper, I think that's why they went with that in this recipe, but you know, do what you want. Presentation is not everything, my friends. So I'm gonna take my peppers, Toss them right on the sheet pan. And then I'm just gonna cut my chicken. I have chicken thighs. You guys know my love affair with a good chicken thigh. I'm just gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces. But I'm sure if you wanted to make a meatless meal, just add a few more veggies and you're good to go. Here's the chicken, you guessed it, straight onto the sheet pan. Washing my hands. Uh, oh, hold on, <laughs> I forgot the secret ingredient. Oh, and I get to use my special, uh, where, where is it? That one, where is it? Here it is. My special double-sided whisk, my favorite utensil uh, for the time being. You need the juice of one fresh lime. I love uh, to get all the juice out. I just roll it. I put, a, I put my whole body weight into it and give it a nice roll. Like you're dancing with it. You gotta get your feet down, lime down, and roll. You don't have to stand like that. Uh -huh. You're basically just crushing the insides. Pretend that it's someone you dislike. Oh, limes are so delicious. This would be such a great summertime treat. Uh, yeah, and then just squirt the juice all over the place. The whole lime. You know what? Fresh citrus and fresh herbs, they just elevate food just to another dimension. That is one thing that I think is underrated. Fresh citrus and fresh herbs in a dish. Oh, really? After all that, you use half a cup of barbecue sauce. Uh-oh, this is the end for this one. You know what, I also feel like this is ruining the dish. Oh my gosh, we forgot the onion, hold on. Okay, this is a really sad looking onion, but here I go. And now that I'm thinking, I don't know if you add the barbecue sauce before you throw it in the oven, but what's done is done, and I'm just going to mix it all together. Okay, I just added the limes on the sheet pan just for presentation. Maybe I should just throw the top on there too. 
Looks good. Simple, easy. Oh my gosh, the lime makes this smell absolutely incredible. There we go, there we go. That's a shot. Okay, so this is the before picture in the oven. Recipe says 350, but you know how we do, 411 degrees for about 20 minutes until everything's nicely cooked through. You know what, I just realized we didn't put any salt and pepper on this and that just simply will not do. So I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper. Ooh, here it is. It smells fantastical. I added a little bit more barbecue sauce on it. Um, obviously I was out of like the sweet baby rays. So I used, this is from Trader Joe's Carolina Gold. It tastes great. I feel like barbecue sauce is all made pretty much the same. This smells great. I'm gonna throw it over some rice and we are gonna eat. A bon appetit. <laughs> nice. A bon appetit. This pineapple chicken was delicious, as was everything else that I made. Aside from like the gnocchi dish, not my favorite, but everything else I would totally make again. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, I'm laughing too hard. Let me explain why. Tonight's sheet pan meal includes, no, I don't know what it's called. This is nothing new. I, I don't read things. And it's very apparent in this recipe. So. I thought I saw a picture of on Pinterest, five awesome sheet pan meals, whatever, with gnocchi. So I viewed a few of them and this one came up and I said, I love making that. It's gnocchi with bacon and Brussels sprouts and a little bit of cheese on top. I thought simple, easy, always a crowd pleaser, delicious, everything with bacon. Come to find out, I just looked at the recipe, the actual recipe, because I wanted to make sure I had everything I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out, it is gnocchi with sun-dried tomatoes, not bacon, and spinach, not Brussels sprouts. I just created this whole concoction on my own, but here we're gonna roll with it, and it's gonna be great. Usually I make this in a skillet, just cook the bacon, then throw in the Brussels sprouts, cook it in the bacon fat. Oh my gosh, it adds so much flavor. And then boil the gnocchi, add it to the bacon Brussels sprout mixture. I don't even throw cheese on top, it's all you need is so good. But we're gonna whip this in a sheet pan meal and see if it's equally as delish. So from my research on those sheet pan meals, I would say you could throw just about anything you wanted. <gasps> Wait, I was looking at another one too with gnocchi, it was like, gnocchi and sage and brown butter. Oh, doesn't that sound good? Well, I guess I could have made that, but I chose this instead. These Brussels sprouts are on their last leg, so I'm happy. This is, that's one of the reasons why I went with this meal today because we need to eat these Brussels sprouts. I bet they barely have any nutritional value left in them. <laughs> oh, you know what? Man, I didn't plan on quartering these. My plan for these was to just shave them so it cooked like spinach. Too late. I'm gonna throw the sprouts on the sheet pan and then I'm just gonna cut up this bacon. And now I'm second guessing my brain. Did the original recipe call for sun-dried tomatoes or fire-roasted red peppers? I'm gonna go check. Well, it called for sun-dried tomatoes, so there's that. But in the past I have made a sheet pan meal with gnocchi and a bunch of veggies, like eggplant and I don't remember what else, but it was okay. Moral of the story, you can add anything to a sheet pan and it will just come out delicious. I'm just adding some salt and pepper to this. Not too much salt because of the bacon. And then I'm just going to give it a toss. Okay, into the oven, 411 degrees for about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Well, here it is, folks. Uh, I don't know, the texture of the gnocchi is a little strange. They're soft but crunchy on the outside. I'm gonna mix it around and see if like mixing it with the bacon grease will make it a little softer. It's kind of chewy. I also just microwaved some rice and we're probably gonna have leftovers alongside this because this definitely is not enough to feed my whole family but I knew that because I knew we also had leftovers to eat through, so um, yeah, I'm gonna mix this up. Maybe the bacon needs to cook for a little bit longer. Okay, now that it's mixed, let me give it a little chef's taste test. Mmm, okay. I actually enjoy the little crunch and texture of the gnocchi. It's soft on the inside, and then just a little bit of crunch. I like that. If you don't, you can certainly boil them before you throw them on, and I think that will help. But anyway, this is tonight's dinner, a bon appetit. I forgot the main attraction. This will definitely make it taste better. Maybe, I don't know. I don't really love cheese, but my kids do, so. 
Does that make it look fancier? Better or worse? Or the same? I feel like I'm at the eye doctor. Is this better or worse? <laughs> or the same? Uh, do it again. <laughs> okay, how about now? Better or worse? <laughs> it's like snow. <gasps> Is this even a nutritious meal anymore? Was it to begin with? No. Better or worse? Or the same? Tonight for dinner, I'm trying something new. Another sheet pan meal, but a new protein. I don't eat with shrimps a lot. Mostly because one time someone said that they were like the cockroaches of the sea and I just can't stop thinking about that. But lo and behold, I bought some shrimp. You also need some potato. Oh, it's like a crab boil? No, there's no crab. Shrimp oil? I don't know. <laughs> I should just stop even mentioning titles of dinners because there just isn't one. We're gonna eat shrimp and corn and andouille sausage with Creole seasoning, garlic, and potatoes for dinner. That sounds like a great name. Let's get started. I've been putting off making this recipe for a long time, just for no good reason. Alex really likes shrimp, so I figured tonight's the night, you know? Ugh. I'm just gonna cut the potatoes into pretty small pieces. I'm gonna cook it uh, with the corn and the sausage, and then at the end, or toward the end, I'm gonna throw the shrimp on. And that's all she wrote. So I'm just going to get everything cut up and on the sheet pan. That's the MVP of this week. I'm using these baby corn, uh, but I'm, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not gonna cut them in half. Dang. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna cut these in half because I'm not strong enough to do that. <laughs> no big deal. I am gonna throw them on here. And if you've never had corn on the cob in the oven, oh my God, just do it. You're missing out on your life. It's one of my favorite things. The way I normally cook it is throwing it on a sheet pan into the oven, 411 degrees for about 20 minutes. Uh, just with a little bit of salt and pepper, you can do garlic seasoning on it too. That really jazzes things up. And then a tiny little pat of butter on each one comes out stupendous each and every time. I'm cutting up these, oh my gosh, these, a story behind them, andouille sausage. I googled it. I <laughs> I guess I've never bought them before. So this is what I found, $1,000 for four links, this Cajun style andouille, what is this, chicken sausage? Smoked sausage made with pork. Yeah, definitely not chicken. The other white meat, anyway. I was happy I found these because they said andouille, <laughs> but I am semi-worried about the spice. But I thought Cajun kind of plays into it, right? Because we are using, oh, this is Creole seasoning. Is that the same? Are these pre-cooked? Can I try it? Just try it. Oh, it's kind of weird. What is in it? It's like a chewy, something chewy. All right, yeah, yeah. Now I can kind of, kind of taste the spice. Straight onto the sheet pan with these. And I love this brand, amazing. Also, I love chicken sausage, another sheet pan meal idea, but I've shared it with you before, so I thought, don't be redundant. Anyway, another sheet pan meal idea uh, is that same brand sells chicken sausage. It's like apple, apple something, it's my favorite. Just throw that on a sheet pan with a ton of veggies. Cut up any veggies you like, and then just throw that into the oven with some salt and pepper oil. It is supreme every single time. Confession time. Oh, I shouldn't have smelled it. Oh, <laughs> straight up the nostrils. Oh man, I'm definitely gonna sneeze in a minute. Uh, I've never had this Creole seasoning before. I don't know why I went to smell it again. Woohoo! You need a tablespoon, I think. I don't know, I'm just gonna go a little overboard. I, what's so great about this stuff? <coughs> I don't know, I just use it. That's what the recipe says, okay? You know me, I like to follow directions. Okay, give everything a good mix with your hands and then uh, throw it into the oven. I feel like I should throw another vegetable on here, but that's all it said to add. Oh, and these are all the potatoes I had. So, into the oven it goes. For 25 minutes. Beam, bum, be dum, bum, bum, be. That's almost done cooking. I'm, ooh, I'm gonna throw some shrimp in a bowl. What is all that water? Oh, I guess they were frozen. Well, I guess I'll drain it after I pour it all. Uh, so the recipe calls for a pound. I'm gonna do more than that. Are you surprised? How much is in here? Two pounds. Well, I mean, I might as well cook it all. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest. So there's that. Good news is these are already peeled, de-veined, and uh, nothing crappy is added, so there's that. I'm going to season these up with a little bit of salt and pepper, and then 
the star of the show, the Creole seasoning. I, I don't know, a tablespoon or more. Let's just give it a few shakes. And for fun, we'll add some oil because I, I just feel like it needs it. The recipe doesn't, re well, you know what, to be honest, I didn't read the recipe, okay? I watched a video, it was like halfway down the blog page and I thought, yeah, that's good enough. I think it needs a little more Creole. Oh, maybe not, am I ruining it? Oh well, what's done is done. Okay, let's spread these out on the pan. Ooh, it's heavy. Oh, I should've got two mittens. Definitely a two mitten job. I'm just going to flop the shrimp all over the place. Back in the oven, 10 to 15 minutes. Well, they cooked eight minutes before they were nice and pink, and I know if you overcook shrimp, they just get chewy and nasty, so I didn't want that to happen. I pulled them out. Everything looks good. I don't know, I've never done a shrimp anything, so bon appetit. Oh, hey! Wet Alex just ate some and it's like burning his fingers. Will they ever learn something straight out of the oven is hot? Imagine that. Anyway, he says it is bleeping delicious. You heard it here first. However, I haven't had a taste. I'm the true chef in the family, so let me go and do that. Tonight, for dinner time, we are going to make a delectable cuisine. We're making quesadillas on a sheet pan. Did you know you can do this? It's actually kind of cheating because a lot of the prep is on the stove top. I even thought about sharing this one. There were other recipes that I thought about sharing that I have decided against it, like crock pot or what, no, what's it called? Sheet pan chicken pot pie. Because all of that prep is on the stove, but I don't, alas, here we are. Everyone in my house loves quesadillas. Not everyone in my house loves chicken pot pie, so I figured this would be a good one. Just some bell peppers if you have them, an onion, a lime if you want to add it, some cheese. It actually calls for, well, you know, I don't really follow a recipe, so it doesn't matter what it's called for. Can of black beans or any beans that you like, and then I have some ground turkey. You can use any kind of meat that you like. I don't know. Oh my gosh, another one, fajita sheet pan, but I figured everyone knows about that one. Bunch of bell peppers peppers, onions, chicken, some seasoning, you're good to go. Oh, also you need a seasoning for a bunch of seasonings for this, like cumin, paprika. We'll get there when we get there. I don't know. I didn't want to pull them down yet. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna get my mise en place ready. I have just the veggies to cut up and that's basically it. It's a super simple dinner. Oh, you know what else you need that I didn't bring out? Tortillas, of course. The star of the show. Can't have a quesadilla without tortillas. You know what, <laughs> okay. You know what really grinds my gears? So I like tacos and they're super simple, right? But when I make tacos for my family, they would rather have, uh, what are they called? Chimichangas. I don't know how to make an authentic chimichanga, so you know what I do. I grab the GFG, the George Foreman Grill, and I just wrap the contents of a taco without the lettuce into that, wrap it up, and then I put it on the George Foreman, and they love that. So I figured they would really like the quesadilla in the oven because it's basically the same thing, except for I don't have to, you know, roll out each of them individually. So here we are. I don't know where I was. I don't know what I was talking about. I don't really know what I was doing. What year is it? Mom life. So I guess I'm just gonna finish cutting this crap up. All right, let's take this to the stove top. I'm gonna saute all of the veggies at the same time that I cook the meat. And I thought about adding two pounds of meat. I don't know if that's going to be necessary. Mm, ground turkey is always such a delight. I'm gonna go in with this thing. I'm gonna tell you what. I don't like cleaning this thing. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of salt and pepper, the basics. Yeah, okay, I'll add more meat. I mean, we have to fill up a whole sheet pan, right? While that's cooking, I pulled these from my pantry and now I'm thinking, wow, I hope I have enough. Also, wow, this is a huge pan. Most of the pans do two layers and that like flops over the pan, you know? So then I guess you can get away with one pound of meat. Wow. What am I gonna do? <laughs> what would you do with the clum? What would you do with the clum duck bar? What am I gonna? How am I gonna figure that? If I had more tortillas, it wouldn't be a problem. But I don't have more tortillas, so it's a problem. Used a couple of my brain cells. I figured I'd do it in this. It is not a sheet pan, but what do we say? It's good enough. Yes, that's right. All right. For the seasonings, you just add some paprika. Not too much, it just gives it that smoky flavor, a little bit of depth. 
some cumin, and a lot of that. A little bit of garlic powder, and I think that's it. I just smell it. If it smells like taco seasoning, it's good. You can add a little bit of water, but the ground turkey is kind of liquidy, so I just, this is good. I'm going to spoon my mixture in, uh, mostly because that pot is so heavy. I guess I could just dump it in. All right, let's just dump it in, why not? Ah, I don't think I'm gonna throw it all in there. I like having leftover taco meat or like taco salads the next day. Wait, is this a sheet pan quesadilla? You could put anything in a quesadilla, right? Chicken, ah, well, I don't know what else, anything you want. I'm going to add a can of beans. I'm gonna reserve some just because Meredith likes to eat them plain. Just shred some cheese over top. Or if you don't like cheese, don't add this part. I don't really like cheese. Well, I don't really like quesadillas. <laughs> I make them for my kids though, you know? I aim to please. You know what I do like though? Flautas. You know what Mexican restaurant I miss so much? Don Pablo's. Is that even still around? It's not here in Tampa. I could drive two hours, but like, I don't miss it that much, you know what I mean? All right, is that enough? I feel like that's enough. And then I guess you just put one tortilla on top and then fold the rest over. I'm just realizing I didn't like grease the bottom of this pan. Oh well. Okay, and then you put a pan right over top of it to keep it from unfolding into the oven. 411 degrees for until it's done. I don't know, it's already cooked. This is done. Not much to look at. I'll serve it with some lettuce, cheese. I don't know what else. And know. some hummus. And hummus or hot sauce. I forgot the limes. I'm setting plates and stuff but I thought I'd get like a thumbnail picture. Ooh, so fancy. And finally, we have made it to dessert. Oh, you guys, it has been an eat chocolate chips out of the bag kind of day. <laughs> That's why those are out. That's the kind of day I'm having. It's daylight savings time and Meredith woke up at four. Oh my gosh, somebody. I understand why people drink caffeine nowadays. Okay, anyway, uh, oh, it's also pie day. Hello, if I ever needed an excuse to eat a pie, make a pie, today would be the day. So I kept thinking, what kind of sheet pan dessert am I gonna make? I could literally make anything. Cookies are technically a sheet pan dessert because you have put them on a sheet pan, right? <laughs> I thought I have so many strawberries. Maybe I'll make that strawberry shortcake kind of thing, but I've already made that with you last July. So then I thought, hmm, I really want some, what is this called? Pie? What is, what is it? What is this? <laughs> My sleep deprived brain. Some nuts, some nut pie. Pecan. Yeah, there it is. Pecan pie. I looked up a recipe. Typically I do pioneer woman recipe, but I, I'm just trying to switch things up, you know what I mean? We've already made that together, and plus, I, this is a sheet pan pecan pie. So I figured it's legit. You need some vanilla, six eggs, pecans, of course, star of the show, light brown sugar, Kiro syrup, and what are these? Oh, I was going to make this from scratch pie crust, and then I found these in my freezer. Oh, they look really sad. Uh, so we're gonna, hopefully they work out. <laughs> Is it horrible that I'm making pecan pie in like a spring mixing bowl? I don't think so. Six eggs straight in, double crack every time. That is what will get me a Food Network show. A little bit of vanilla extract, how much? Ooh, two tablespoons? That's too much, I'll do that much. One tablespoon about. I make my own rules. When is this goodbye? Cause I know I found this October. I'm gonna hope that says 2021, but I can't really read it. I mean, it's syrup, right? It can't be bad. It's not discolored or anything, so I'm gonna say that's a good sign. Okay, whisk away. We're gonna measure out one cup of Kiro syrup. This is called multitasking. Uh, welcome to adulthood, right? Or parenthood, I don't know. One cup to the top. Make it hot. all night. I don't know the words. My club songs were like, I want it chicka, 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 that way. <laughs> I promise I will never try to beatbox again. <laughs> what else do I need? Oh, brown syrup. One cup of brown sugar. Oh, great. That's not coming out. That, you know what? Here, that's good enough. All right, what else? Four cups of pecans here. How is this going to fill up a sheet pan? You guys, I think my sheet pan is too big. It's gonna be a really thin pecan pie. Should I just make a pie? No, I'm not doing it, guys, okay? I already cheated on the quesadilla. Okay, four cups of this stuff? Should I chop them up? I think that's like the Pioneer Woman secret, right? Oh, more brown sugar. Two, three, 
four. I'm just gonna give these a rough chop. I should have got my food processor out. I don't know what I was thinking. You know what guys, I've always wanted a pecan tree. Always, my whole life. Maybe we'll find a house with a pecan tree, right? Could you imagine pecans for free, but also cleaning them up off your driveway? <laughs> Okay, well, that's quite enough. Also, I don't really care. So in go the pecans. Lovely, lovely. I kind of feel like I should double this recipe. Oh man, I got rid of my sheet pans. You know what I mean? My smaller sheet pans because I never used them. And now look at me needing smaller sheet pans twice in a row. Okay, well, these pie crusts look uh, great. Nothing wrong with them at all. They're not discolored. They don't feel weird. It's totally fine. Also, they're round. Oh man, I should have just made my own. It's too late. What am I gonna do? <laughs> this is not gonna fill this up. What? Well, we're gonna have to cheat again. Sorry guys. Cause I'm cheater, cheater, the pumpkin eater, and the party's just begun. I'm gonna use this. Is this good? Technically, it's the same idea, just um, smaller, right? Right. Just say, just say right, okay? I say right, you say right, right? That's good. You know, making your own pie crust isn't difficult at all. I just, I've had these in my freezer, if you can't tell, forever. So I needed to use them before they went bad, but um, I'm kind of thinking that ship has sailed. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That looks groovy. Oh look, all the pecans rose to the top. Oh, I love when that, I could just eat this with a spoon. Dump all of this in here. Oh, that looks great. Oh yeah, that looks real good. <laughs> you guys, this looks so good. Alex is gonna be so happy. He loves pecan pie. I love pecan pie. My mouth is salivating. Let's get this thing in the oven. 411 degrees. I don't know, 50 minutes? This is the star of the stinking show. Can't wait to eat this. Come on. Pie on pie day. And it's pecan pie and it's not Thanksgiving. What a treat. I'm about to dig into this and you guys, I whipped up literally some whipping cream. You just do like a cup of whipping cream, couple tablespoons of powdered sugar, a dash of vanilla. I even left the vanilla out because who cares? Hoo hoo, so easy, so delicious. This is seriously the best part of my week. Let's be honest though, I'm gonna need about double the whipping cream. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. Hope I gave you some dinner inspiration. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day and I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Mm. Meredith is waiting for me to hold her. <coughs> it's like, mom, I'm ready. <laughs>